Welcome back to Hashtag That. I'm Liz Zipolito. And I'm Erin Russell. From the Directors Guild Awards to Pooh, Blood and Honey, we're back with the latest entertainment news updates. All that and more from Hamden to Hollywood, we are your source for Quinnipiac's entertainment news. From Hamden to Hollywood, we are your source for Quinnipiac's entertainment news. Old Hollywood star Stella Stevens has passed away at the age of 84 on Friday after a battle with Alzheimer's disease. Most notably, she starred in Too Late Blues, Girls, 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 The Nutty Professor, and The Silencers, with Bobby Darin, Elvis Presley, Jerry Lewis, and Dean Martin, respectively. Audiences will also recognize her in the shows such as Bonanza, The Love Boat, and Fantasy Island. Green Life founder Maria Calabrese, Stevens' manager and friend, said, quote, she was an amazing animal lover, horse wrangler, rock and roller, so ahead of her time. What a tremendous body of work and loss, end quote. Stevens is survived by her son Andrew and three grandchildren. An update on actor Bruce Willis's battle with aphasia was announced this week. Willis was diagnosed with aphasia in the spring of last year. The disease is a brain condition that affects how a person can communicate. His family released a, in a statement that his condition had progressed to frontotemporal dementia or FTD. His daughter, Rumor Willis, on Instagram said, quote, Unfortunately, challenges with communication are just one symptom of the disease Bruce faces. While this is painful, it is a relief to finally have a clear diagnosis. Ryan Seacrest is leaving the daytime talk show live with Kelly and Ryan after six seasons, he announced on Thursday. Seacrest admired his co-host, Kelly Ripa, and said, quote, Working alongside Kelly the past six years has been a dream job and one of the highlights of my career. She's been an amazing partner, friend, confidant, and although we will always be a part of each other's lives, I will miss our mornings together, end quote. Seacrest is headed to Los Angeles to prepare to host another season of American Idol. His replacement, none other than Kelly's husband, Mark Consuelos. The renaming of the show to Live with Kelly and Mark is bound to happen soon. The 75th Directors Guild Awards were held this weekend, and some notable wins included Bill Hader for winning, winning his achievements in the comedy Barry, and Sam Levinson for winning his show Euphoria. On the film side, the nominees included Steven Spielberg for The Fablemans and Joseph Kaczynski for Top Gun Maverick. Everything Everywhere All at Once, directed by the Daniels, took home the win, and that list includes, cl included all men after the last two years had women directors taking home the prize. That raised some eyebrows as some people thought that Sarah Polly for Women Talking or Gina Prince Bythewood for The Woman King would get nominated. With all that being said, this is a great predictor towards the Oscars, which will be held on March 12th. With many of our favorite characters entering the public domain this year, Michael Rada and Michael Katz Flynn discuss the new film Pooh, Blood and Honey and its impact on the public domain. Hey, hashtag, it's Michael. And I'm Michael. Last night we saw Pooh, Blood and Honey in theaters and we're gonna give you our thoughts and explain the public domain behind it on why this was able to happen and what this could mean for other characters. Now, public domain is when copyright is no longer protected by a certain property or franchise. And now in this case, the original Winnie the Pooh book is now public domain so anybody can make a project out of it. Yeah, but the key term is the original book. So anything from that book they can do, but like anything Disney has done with the characters, they can't do. Like Disney created Tigger, so that's not up for public domain just yet. Like they can only do stuff with the characters and the versions of them in that original book. I really liked the movie. It was exactly what I expected and not a lot more. It was just a fun Winnie the Pooh horror movie. Yeah, no, like, I mean, I gotta be honest. Like I enjoyed this movie a lot more than I expected. I mean, it's still ridiculous, don't get me wrong, but like, it was pretty enjoyable. Mm -hmm. It was kind of the definition of so bad it's good, but it still had some like interesting, fun, energetic scenes that I really liked, and they had a lot of clever things that I I would have never thought of. So I actually I actually did enjoy it. Yeah, like the suspense was good. It's just the thing is because it's Winnie the Pooh, that takes away all the horror from it. Yeah. Like. I would probably feel a little more freaked out as like original characters, original story, but just the fact that it's Pooh and Piglet going around killing people, that just yeah, it's made the, yeah, the concept is so insane that it's hard to get scared or really put you in that environment. It, it does live up to the name Blood and Honey, because there is a lot of both. 
Yeah, no, like, the deaths were very overly gruesome. Like, it was like, come on, it doesn't need to happen. Now, the director of this movie, Reese Waterfield, is making a sequel to this movie and a Peter Pan horror movie, because now that's in public domain. Yeah, no, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens, because over the course of the next couple of decades, we're entering this new era where all these beloved characters are gonna be public domain. Like, the original Mickey Mouse from that Steamboat cartoon is going to be public domain, so anyone can do stuff with that. And once we enter the 2030s, characters like Bugs Bunny, Batman, Superman are going to be public domain. So people can do whatever they want with that. So that's going to be very interesting to see what happens there. Now the number used to be 50 years, then it turned to 75, and now it's 95. So studios like Warner Brothers and Disney don't want people meddling with their characters. So the renewal of the law is subject to change. Yeah, no, I assume it will change because I don't think Disney and Warner Brothers are going to want people meddling their mascots, so I feel like if they were to make like horror movies like this with those characters, it's going to put a ba bad image on the company. I'm Michael. And I'm Michael. We'll be back after this commercial break. Type 2 diabetes can have a big impact on your life, but how can it be prevented? Well, the first step is knowing if you have prediabetes, a serious medical condition that puts you at high risk for type 2 diabetes. One in three American adults has prediabetes, but more than 80% don't know they have it. The good news is, prediabetes can be reversed, and for many people, healthy changes in their daily routine can make a big difference. Take the one-minute risk test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. I don't think that many kids in my son's school even do it. He makes fun of his friend who vapes. He would never try it. She's in the song. She's on the honor roll. She's just on the title. No way. No way. No way. No way. My kid would never vape. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. With many of our favorite franchises getting brought back to the big screen this year, Haley Ruscio, Carly Stenger, Alex Kendall, and Lane Dubin sat down to talk about which adaptation they're most excited for. Let's take a look. What's up, Hashtag? It's Alex, and I'm going to be talking about How to Train Your Dragon, which is getting a live-action movie. Yes, DreamWorks is hopping on the live-adaptation bandwagon along with Disney, and it's coming from the same original creator who created the original animated series, Dean Deloy. This project is set for coming out on March 14th of 2025, but this is Deloy's first time trying to make a live adaptation series. Helping him make the jump is veteran Mark Platt, who has also worked on various other films such as Legally Blonde and Universal's upcoming series Wicked. However, they are at risk for falling down the hole so many other live adaptations have fallen down and risk ruining a beloved series. Personally, I'm very excited for this live adaptation and I can't wait to see what this new production team comes up with. Hey Hashtag, it's Lane. The toy company Mattel has recently decided to relaunch its Barney franchise. The franchise is hoping to reimagine all of its projects in a more animated way, starting off with a new Barney reveal. As for what I hope to see, I want that same lovability and kindness that the entire cast of Barney always emulated after every single show. I also hope that the franchise sticks to its musical roots so that it can engage its audience in the best way possible. I really want to see the Barney franchise succeed this time around and for it not to end and Barney to just end up being a joke like it did the first time. It's showtime! Hey Hashtag, it's Haley, and today I'm here to talk about the long-awaited Beetlejuice sequel. Recently, rumors have popped up that Sadie Sink of Stranger Things fame is starring in the movie playing Lydia Dietz's daughter. Sink isn't the only person rumored to be cast, with Michael Keaton, Winona Ryder, and Catherine O'Hara all rumored to be reprising their roles. Personally, my hope for the Beetlejuice franchise is that any future movies are sequels, not remakes. After the success of the animated TV show and of the Broadway musical, it's clear that audiences want a new Beetlejuice. They don't want a rehashing of the same story. What I'm most excited for is to see Lydia's dynamic with the ghost with the most again. 
My favorite part of the animated TV show and of the musical is that they dove more into the relationship between Lydia and Beetlejuice, and I hope that any potential sequels will address that as well. Hey guys, it's Carly, and I'm going to be talking about the announcement of Frozen 3 to continue the Frozen franchise, which I'm really excited about because Frozen has always been one of my favorite Disney movies. I am a little nervous for the movie to come out because I feel like sometimes franchises kind of push the movies too far when there's no story to write and no movie to make just because there's a fan base that will watch it. It's a little difficult to see where the characters can go from here because it kind of came to a natural conclusion and I really don't want another movie to kind of ruin the whole franchise in itself. In all, I am really excited for Frozen 3. I love the cast, I love the storyline, I love the music. Even if it's not as good as the first two, I do still think it will end up being good and I'll definitely listen to the music on the soundtrack. So, back to you guys at the desk. Mason Glaude is back with this week's Late Night Highlights. Let's see what he has for us this week. Thanks guys, let's jump right into our first story. Fresh off his Super Bowl win, Kansas City Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes appeared on Jimmy Kimmel Live last Monday night to discuss the big game. Mahomes talked about the team's effort in the game, saying, quote, it was a great team win against a great team, end quote. Mahomes also discussed his ankle injury, his trip to Disney with his daughter after the win, and he named Travis Kelsey as the most valuable partier after the game. Mahomes ended the interview by explaining that he will go back and watch the big win again, but will then move on to train to win another one. Next, Niall Horn appeared on The Late Late Show with James Corden last week to discuss his upcoming album titled The Show. Horn discussed his creativity, his creative process writing the album in Joshua Tree and his newfound love for songwriting. As a surprise, Corden presented Horn with a guitar which led to Horn performing his new single Heaven live for the first time. Horn ended the interview complimenting Corden and his long and soon to be overrun hosting The Late Late Show. Finally, on a lighter note, Last week, The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon celebrated their new tradition of perm week. Each show, Fallon chose one member of the audience to give a perm hairstyle to. Fallon explained the tradition each episode saying, quote, nothing seems sacred anymore. Nothing seems permanent. And that's why this week we are saluting the one thing we know is still permanent, the permanent, end quote. Last Wednesday's show even featured recent Quinnipiac University alum Tyler Toledo receiving a perm on the show, surprising his father and friends. That's all I have for this week's Late Night Highlights. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Mason. Quinnipiac's annual Wake the Giant concert is only two months away, and in light of the performer reveal, we will be discussing your predictions with this week's Hashtag Ranked. All right, let's get into it. So... There is a lot of different people on this list. What do you think about these results? Well, I'm surprised that The Wiggles is up first. Um, I associate them with my childhood, mm -hmm. um, but I can see how people now would want to see them. Um, I did do some research, though, and they will be in Australia at the end of April. So I don't know about that. You know, they are dynamic performers, but I have already seen them in concert. Next, we got Loud Luxury. They're a Canadian duo. You've definitely heard of them before. Uh, big in the EDM scene and big for college kids. I think that that would be a really good match. But um, that's kind of what I'm thinking for this. What about what else do you think? I agree. I think that could be a top contender as well. Now Matt Reif, he is a comedian, and he was also on the list. And people love him. I have seen uh, some of him on TikTok, and I have to agree with them. Um, I don't know. I know last year they tried to have another comedian, um, so maybe people want to see the same sort of thing this year, um, but I think I would prefer Loud Luxury yeah. over him. Yeah, Matt Reif definitely is super funny and definitely appeals to the Quinnipiac uh, demographic, but exactly. Ali and AJ, you know, they're going to be on the East Coast during the time, so I don't think it's surprising that they might be here. Um, so that's all we have for this week on Hashtag Ranked. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Meet the scan. A simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early. I'm here to save you. But I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. Oh man, that's a new fence. 
If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at SaveByTheScan.org. I think it's just vapor with flavor. It won't hurt my kid like cigarettes, right? Vaping is safer than smoking, isn't it? There's really not even that much nicotine in them, right? My kid? My kid kid knows it's dangerous. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping, maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Hmm, maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made home ownership happen. Homeschooling yourself on loans, beefing up your credit score. So I'm pre-approved. You were like, yes! Sorry. Color coding listings, ticking boxes, and flushing every toilet in a 20-mile radius. Home sweet home. You aced house hunter. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. We're back with Hollywood News Update, and here to fill us in on all the latest West Coast entertainment news is Liv Barrios Johnson. Thanks, guys. Jumping right into the first story. During the 57th Super Bowl, Rihanna rocked the stage with her bright red outfit, and it was later announced that she was, in fact, expecting baby number two. But Rihanna was not the only person who was putting on a performance. American Sign Language interpreter Justina Miles delivered interpretations and went viral for her energy and enthusiasm throughout the performance. She also became the first deaf woman to perform American Sign Language at the Super Bowl pregame and halftime shows. In an interview with Gail King on CBS Mornings, Justina talked about her preparation for the show. She explained how she memorized the lyrics of each song so that she could sign the lyrics to the exact beat. She also practiced for a week straight with the set list and performers. After the show, she even received a direct message from Rihanna herself saying just how amazing her performance was. What do you guys think about giving interpreters the fame they deserve? I definitely think it's very important to start giving the interpreters the fame they deserve. If, as you saw in that clip, she was killing it. She was performing just like Rihanna was, even if not as much. So she was definitely killing it. I think they definitely deserve more interpretation because it's super important for people to be seeing it today. I agree. I think that this interpreter really played off Rihanna's energy and for those that needed the interpretations, they definitely understood the vibe that Rihanna had on that stadium in that moment. Um, I also love all of the other um, interpreters for the national anthem. I think they all did a wonderful job and really improving the accessibility of the Super Bowl. Liv, what else do you have for us? In other music, or should I say musical news, Tina Fey and Tim Meadows are teaming up for the new Mean Girls movie musical adaptation. Tina Fey played a high school teacher, Miss Norberry, and Tim Meadows played the principal, Mr. Duvall. Fey revealed that the adaptation was created from both the original film and the stage version that she wrote. She also shared that filming will begin on March 6th and that the cast will include Renee Rapp as Regina George and Angry Rice as Katie, to name a few. In an interview on Late Night with Seth Meyers, while she did not confirm if she would play her original teacher role, she did say, quote, we couldn't age out. Teachers work forever, end quote. Some people took to Instagram and felt like there was no need for another version of the movie. In a time where almost every movie is getting a new adaptation, is this a smart move for an already beloved movie? And what possible consequences do you think this could have if it tanks at the box office? Mean Girls is such a classic that I think there's definitely the audience for this adaptation. And especially with the cast, I think that it will have um, such a good like reception from audiences. And if it does go wrong, we still have the OG Mean Girls. Yeah, I completely agree. I know I will be at the theaters when this comes out, and I know my mom will be there as well. We are a big Mean Girls fan, so nothing's going to stop us from going. Um, and people saw the musical after Mean Girls 2 flop, so I don't think that there should be any problem with it. They have a star-studded cast. Renee Rapp is the best adaptation of Regina George, so I don't think that uh, Tina Fey has anything to worry about with this one. What do you think, Liv? 
Yeah, I couldn't agree more, and I think it'll be really interesting to see just how this movie adaptation ends up turning out. And this just might be the new fetch. <laughs> and lastly, Lizzo had the chance to fangirl over Destiny's Child. When Lizzo was young, she saw the group perform live at a Walmart in Houston, Texas. This was just when the group was starting out and working their way up to fame. Since that performance, Lizzo always had her heart set on getting the chance to meet them in person and tell them that she was there. Now that Lizzo is herself a Grammy Award winning singer, rapper, and flutist, she finally got her chance. She was able to tell Beyonce, Michelle Williams, and Kelly Rowland all about it. They were all there and so sh shocked and amazed to know that their own fan from day one is now just as successful and important to the music industry. Artists are always impacting other artists. When, you, when listening to Lizzo's music, you could hear the Destiny's Child influences. Could you guys? I definitely could hear the Destiny Child influences on these because, you know, they're both very um, powerful voices, Destiny's Child and Lizzo, and you could definitely hear um, within Destiny's Child music them harmonizing between the three of them, and in Lizzo's music, you can hear them her harmonizing with herself. So I definitely can see those um, vibes from both uh, performers, and it must be a great feeling to know that somebody who was your fan is now just as successful as you. What do you think? I love how Destiny's Child has such a wide, you know, vocal range with all of those three amazing, powerful women, and Lizzo does just that on her own, and I think that is so great for Lizzo um, as a female artist in the industry. That's it. What do you think, Liv? Yeah, I could not agree more. Well, that's all I have for this week's Hollywood News Update. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Me? The scan, a simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early. I'm here to save you. But I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. Oh man, that's a new fence. If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at savedbythescan.org. I think it's just vapor with flavor. It won't hurt my kid like cigarettes, right? Vaping is safer than smoking, isn't it? There's really not even that much nicotine in them, right? My kid? My kid, my kid knows it's dangerous. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping, maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Hmm, maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made home ownership happen. Homeschooling yourself on loans, beefing up your credit score. So I'm pre-approved. You were like, yes, sorry. Color coding listings, ticking boxes, and flushing every toilet in a 20 mile radius. Home sweet home. You waste house hunter. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. There is so much music coming out within the next month, and here to talk all about that is Haley Wynn with the Monthly Music Spotlight. Hey, hashtag Haley Wynn here. I'm going to talk to you about TikTok. Yes, TikTok. You guys probably all know about it, have heard about it, or even use it yourselves. But today, I want to talk about TikTok in a different way. Did you know that TikTok is the breeding grounds for some new up-and-coming artists? I'm going to be highlighting three musicians who use TikTok as a platform for them. First off, we're going to start with Jessia. Jessia Music uses her TikTok account in an interesting way. She likes to share covers as well as some of her own songs. One of them includes Nobody Hates You. I really like Nobody Hates You because it has a strong message that's real and that people can connect to. Next up is 21-year-old Camelio. Camelio has 4.3 million followers on TikTok. He writes songs and stuff. Some of his songs include Monsters and Love and Hate. I really like his social media account, specifically TikTok. That's what we're talking about here now. If you're a TikToker, maybe you know the trend from a little while ago. I wanna ride it, da na na na, ride it. Well, guess what? That was a cover by Camelio. Well, there's one video that really touches home and hits home for me. It is him singing a song and having his mom listen to it and cry for the first time in front of him. Very special moment between the two of them. And that was shared through TikTok. Christian French is the last person I'm gonna talk about. 
Christian French has 26,500 followers. He has songs called Thank God as well as Avalanche. That's one of my favorites personally. Christian French's videos on TikTok are very cool and funny to watch. He has some great visuals and also interacts with some fans on there. You'll see a video where he signs his first forehead, his first autograph with his name on it, a forehead of a young girl. Christian French is very casual about what he posts and that's the goal of TikTok. I think TikTok is a place where people just like to be themselves and have fun and goof around and Christian French as well as Jessia and Camilio do the same thing. All three of these artists are very unique, have something to give, and show it through TikTok. I'm so excited to see the future of these three musicians that I found on TikTok, and you can also find some as well. Thank you so much for letting me talk to you, hashtag I'm Haley Wynn. I'm going to give it back to you guys at the desk. Today we have another game of hashtag debate that where Aaron and I will be debating some of our favorite movies. Uh, let's see what we got first. <laughs> okay. Oh, clueless and legally blonde. I am a sucker for all things Reese Witherspoon. Really? I have to go with legally blonde. I think Elle Woods is such an amazing role model. She is so powerful, and I have nothing but respect for her. I am inspired by Elle Woods, but come on. Cher in Clueless? That was a cultural reset. That is the movie that shaped me into who I am today. Um, it's just, like... There's nothing like it. It's one of the best no movies that came from the 90s, and I think that Legally Blonde came after it, so it's got to be um, coming from Clueless. I agree. I think Alicia Silverstone is really She's good at her, it. She's her, and is. the Super Bowl commercial, too. She is. Killed it. Next up, what do we have? <gasps> oh! I'm oh. going to go Spider-Man No Way Home. I am a Marvel fanatic. I love it so much, and... Spider-Man No Way Home was one of the first Spider-Man movies that I actually saw. Yes. I hadn't really paid attention to those movies, and I cried like a baby watching really? that movie. I kid you not, I sat there in that theater bawling my eyes out. I think we're going to have to agree on that one. I think I agree. It, that movie is so powerful. Yes, my favorite Marvel movie, my favorite, favorite Spider-Man movie alike. Um, it's just so beautiful and like really well done. I think it's one of the best Marvel movies we've mm -hmm. seen today. The way that they wrapped up all of the Spider-Man actors, there's just it's nothing just bad to say about it. It is. Uh, it what is. do we have next? All right, A Simple Favor and Shutter Island. I'm going to have to go Shutter Island on this one. I think it's one of the most mind-bending movies that has been put out to date. It is, you're in on a roller coaster when you're seeing that movie. It's going to make you question a lot of things, and it's just so wonderfully done, and Leonardo DiCaprio kills it in it. Yes, and while I love Leo, I'm going to have to go with a simple flavor. I think Blake Lively does such a good job pr portraying this character yeah. in uh, that movie, yeah. and it's. but I think they're both a cool like psycho thriller type yeah. movie. It's definitely really interesting. What do we have next? All right, moving on to Motivational Monday. Amanda Gorman is a second time children's book author. Something Someday is illustrated by Christian Robinson and is set to release September of this year. Publisher Viking Children's Books shared that Gorman's book is, quote, a message of hope, end quote. Gorman reiterated this idea in her statement saying, quote, I wrote Something Someday to show that though it may be difficult, when we work together, even the smallest acts of kindness can lead to the largest positive change, end quote. Gorman's first children's book, Change Sings, was released in September of 2021. Gorman was recognized nationally at President Biden's inauguration in January of 2021 when she read her poem, The Hill, Hill We Climb. Since then, she has released Call Us What We Carry, a new collection of poetry. Moving on, rapper Eminem is making headlines as he granted some kids wishes for Make-A-Wish Foundation last week. He has been working with the organization for years, having meetups in hospitals and concerts, but now he has the perfect place, his restaurant, Mom's Spaghetti in Detroit. The only way the public has, seen, has been finding out about these meetups are through the social media of the kids or parents. Due to the fact that he doesn't boast about his char charity work, Ben, one of the cancer survivors, posted on Instagram, quote, Literally got to meet my hero in the same day Marshall, a.k.a. Eminem, got to meet two other survivors, Kylie and Tabitha. 
That's all we have this week on Hashtag That. Make sure to follow us on our social media accounts to stay up to date. I'm Erin Russell. And I'm Liz Ippolito. Thank you for watching Hashtag That from the producers, talent, and everyone working hard behind the scenes. Thank you for watching, and we will see you again next week. Thank you.